So on this slide, um, we're going to be taking a look at using our solubility rules to determine if each substance is soluble in water. And our solubility rules, those were um, substances that were aqueous, we used yellow, and phase symbols, those were substances that were blue. Um, so let's look at the first one, sodium nitrate here. And if I look on my solubility rules, um, here's sodium ions. Sodium ions are soluble, so that means that I would write aqueous for my sodium nitrate. Silver sulfide. I can look at silver, and I can see that silver compounds are insoluble. It's not one of the exceptions. Or I could look at sulfide. Sulfides are insoluble. I should get the same answer no matter where I look. So silver sulfide is solid. So you go ahead and try some of those and I will work on the answers also. You can pause it and then turn it back on. So hopefully you got a lot of them. Um, I just want to take a look at a couple of the last ones with you. Calcium sulfate. So if I look on my solubility rules, um, I see that sulfates are mostly soluble, but I always want to check the exceptions. Exceptions I see here are calcium sulfate. So if it's not soluble, that means it's insoluble, and I'm going to write a solid down. So that was one of the exceptions there. So calcium sulfate is solid. Um, lead, bromide, PBR2. Um, so if I look here, bromides are usually soluble, but exceptions are with silver and mercury and lead, all those heavy metals we try to avoid. So again, that means it's going to be solid. Um, so let's come over here. And I would say that my lead bromide is solid. And I'm just color coding so you can see the consistency here. So the next thing that we're going to do is come down here and think about combining some solutions. So we're working towards these chemical reactions. So we're going to look at are these combined? And or once these combine, what are the formulas of the products? And it says to first write out the ions and then recombine the ions. So here's what that's going to look like. KOH, this is a good review from chapter 3, break it back into ions. Um, Cu must be 2 plus to go with Br minus. So I'm going to write down the ions for all of those. So go ahead and do that and then catch back up with me. So you should have something that looks like this now. And those would be all the ions present. I'm thinking a double displacement reaction where I combine two different solutions together. So now I want to do a double displacement reaction which means that potassium is going to go bond with bromide and copper is going to go bind with hydroxide or bond with it. So here's what that would look like. Um, K and Br together, positive, negative, become KBr. Cu2 plus and OH minus become CuOH2. So I want to continue like that. Um, go ahead and work on that a minute and pause this and then come back to it. So you should be making some progress. Um, my last one here, sodium combines with sulfate, magnesium with carbonate. So I end up with Na2SO4 and MgCO3. So if these two solutions reacted, these are the products we would get. So the last thing I want to do is use my solubility rules, kind of bring everything together here, and figure out in that last box which of these would be soluble in water. Um, and which would not be soluble. So those are going to be my solids. So now I'm going to do what I did up here on all of these substances. Um, so for example, KBr, when I look at my solubility rules, I find out that that would be aqueous, copper hydroxide. Um, I find out that that would be solid. So go ahead and work on a few of those um, and then we will check your work. So here's what I got. Um, see if that matches with what you got. And I just want to point out um, this third one down. If I mix these two solutions and all of the products are aqueous, um, then that means everything is an ion. And that means that I didn't make any solids, liquids, or gases. So I would say that this is an instance where I have no reaction. So we can predict formulas. We can find out if something's solid or aqueous. We can predict products, and then we can figure out if the products are solid or aqueous. And we'll use that on our next slide then.